Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Over the past several decades, unmanned and remotely piloted drones have become essential workhorses for the United States military. Yet, many engineers believe that the possibilities for these aircraft extend far beyond attack and defense roles. A prime example of this innovation is the Boeing MQ-25 Stingray. Developed under the U.S. Navy's Unmanned Carrier Aviation Program, the MQ-25 is built to launch from aircraft carriers and provide aerial refueling to the carrier air wing. This capability could significantly expand the range and combat endurance of manned aircraft, such as the F-A-18 Super Hornet, EA-18G Growler, and F-35C Lightning II. While most drones remain remotely piloted, the MQ-25 is designed to autonomously take off, refuel, and land without the need for direct human control. The MQ-25 is essentially a flying fuel tank with wings. Measuring about 51 feet in length with a 75-foot wingspan, it stands just 9.8 feet tall giving it a low profile that makes detection by radar difficult. Powered by a single Rolls-Royce AE 307 Newtons turbofan engine generating around 10,000 pounds of thrust, the Stingray was not designed for speed. Instead, Boeing engineers prioritized its ability to carry large amounts of fuel over distances of up to 500 nautical miles. Its advanced flight control system allows it to function independently with algorithms that enable real-time decision-making, adjustments to flight paths, and rapid responses to changing conditions. Equipped with sophisticated avionics and precision landing technology, the MQ-25 is capable of smooth takeoffs and landings almost every time. One of the most direct predecessors of the MQ-25 is the Northrop Grumman X-47B. Introduced in 2011, this prototype completed its first carrier flight test aboard the USS Harry S. Truman. At the time, the project was highly classified and the X-47B was carefully transported onto the carrier under wraps to prevent enemy observation. Like the MQ-25, it was designed for unmanned, semi-autonomous operations and was specifically intended to fly from carriers to carry out precision strikes and assist manned aircraft. With its sleek, flat profile, the X-47B also incorporated stealth features to reduce radar visibility. The X-47's first launch and recovery from the USS George H.W. Bush marked a historic milestone the first time an unmanned aircraft had ever operated from a carrier. On that occasion, it was guided by a specially trained pilot standing on the flight deck. Although the program did not advance beyond the demonstration stage, the X-47 represented a vital step in preparing the Navy for more advanced autonomous capabilities. Military aircraft can only remain airborne as long as fuel supplies last.
Drop tanks extend range on long missions, but they are not always practical. This is where aerial refueling tankers come in, greatly increasing endurance. Early experiments with mid-air refueling date back to the 1920s, when pilots flying open cockpit biplanes attempted to transfer fuel from one aircraft to another using handheld cans. Every refueling mission flown by these gas stations in the sky requires meticulous preparation. Pilots and the boom operator, known as the boomer, must complete detailed checklists before takeoff. Once ready, the KC-135 Stratotanker departs with up to 200,000 pounds of fuel, bringing its takeoff weight to 322,500 pounds. The boomer typically works from a small compartment at the rear of the aircraft, lying prone with a chin rest while guiding the refueling boom. From there, the boomer directs receiving aircraft into position within the refueling envelope and can also assist with other duties when not actively engaged in fueling operations. So I decided to become a boom operator because without the tanker operation, no other aircraft can do their missions without it. The boomer's primary roles are refueling and acting as a loadmaster. During a refueling sequence, the boomer instructs the approaching aircraft to move into the correct position for the boom to connect securely with the refueling nozzle. Meanwhile, the pilot and co-pilot manage the stratotanker, monitoring hydraulics, fuel systems, oxygen, electrical components, and engines. Sometimes a fourth crew member handles navigation. All right, take off report. Safety log. With its large cargo bay, the Stratotanker also carries freight. And the boomer, trained as a loadmaster, inspects cargo while staying ready to respond to aircraft in need of fuel. When an aircraft requires refueling, the boomer returns to position and begins a checklist while maintaining constant radio contact with the receiver. One one, you are clear contact. And on, get contact. Close to seventy. The receiving aircraft must hold about 50 feet behind the KC-135 until cleared to approach at roughly one foot per second. Guidance is provided by navigation lights beneath the tanker. Using a joystick, the boomer carefully maneuvers the boom into the receiver's nozzle, maintaining steady alignment throughout the process until disconnection. Hanging out a little low. Next step. Roger that. Take us contact. Zero degrees, take us contact. Zero degrees, take us contact. Good for now. Can we get a contact line? Nine, are you on contact? Other top of the line is clear. Receivers back in 30, 40, 50. Receivers well clear. Behind the cockpit of the KC-135 is a compact galley for preparing snacks and meals during long flights. The boomer, 
navigator, or relief crew can make use of its oven to prepare hot food. From simple items to meals like mini pizzas, these small comforts are vital for maintaining morale during lengthy missions. The best part is the, uh, the crunchy on the outside, it's the perfect texture, and the jalapenos hit the spot. Aerial refueling tankers are often described as the ultimate force multipliers. They either rendezvous with aircraft at designated locations or fly in raceway-shaped holding patterns while other aircraft cycle through to refuel. These maneuvers require precision and discipline. Fighters and attack aircraft typically take 10 to 15 minutes to refuel. While large transports such as the C-17 may remain connected for up to 40 minutes, During this time, the receiver must fly in the tanker slipstream, which increases the difficulty of staying connected. There are two principal methods of aerial refueling. The first is the flying boom system, as used by the KC-135. The second is the probe and drogue system, employed by the US Navy and most allied air forces. Probe and drogue refueling involves aircraft equipped with refueling probes that connect to drogues trailing from tankers such as the KC-130J. Care is essential, since an overly forceful contact can cause the hose to whip dangerously, risking damage or accidents. Once the probe locks into the drogue's nozzle, fuel flows until the transfer is complete, after which the receiver disconnects and continues its mission while the hose and drogue are retracted. When not flying, stratotankers undergo hours of cleaning by ground crews. Aerial refueling exposes the aircraft to fuel residues that can be corrosive and environmentally hazardous. So thorough washing is essential to remove contaminants and extend service life. Pre-flight maintenance is equally critical. Technicians inspect every major system, fuel, hydraulics, and electrical, before approving a mission. They measure fuel levels, check pumps and filters, and perform leak tests to ensure system integrity. Since the KC-135 can carry more than 200,000 pounds of fuel for both itself and receiving aircraft, maintaining fuel system reliability is paramount. Another challenge stems from the age of the Stratotanker fleet. 
first flown in 1957, many of its parts are no longer in production. Maintenance units such as the 92nd Maintenance Squadron must fabricate replacements themselves. Using advanced scanning technology, technicians analyze worn parts and reproduce them from scratch with precision tools and digital manuals. From early biplanes passing fuel by hand to today's advanced stratotankers and the Navy's developing MQ-25 Stingray, aerial refueling has always served one purpose, keeping aircraft in the fight longer. The MQ-25 points toward the future, merging the dependability of established tanker operations with the autonomy of unmanned flight. while the KC-135 remains the backbone of U.S. aerial refueling. Innovations like the MQ-25 and lessons from the X-47B demonstrate how technology is redefining range, endurance, and flexibility. Together, these advancements ensure that American air power will remain unmatched projecting strength across the globe whenever and wherever needed. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.